Hello, today we are going to discuss the causes of hypoxemia. Hypoxemia is a low oxygen content in arterial blood. It is one of the commonest pathologies found in hospitals and is also one of the most common reasons for referral to critical care. A simple way to remember the causes of hypoxemia is to think of the four causes. We can split them into hypoxic hypoxemia, which I will discuss in more in a minute, anemic hypoxia, circulatory hypoxia and histotoxic hypoxia. They are, the latter three causes are quite self-explanatory. Circulatory hypoxia, for example, is a lack of ability of the heart to pump oxygenated blood around the body. Anemic hypoxia is the lack of carrying capacity, so the lack of haemoglobin, to carry oxygen around the body. And histotoxic hypoxia is due to the fact that there is often a poison, carbon monoxide or cyanide, that prevents the mitochondria from metabolising the oxygen delivered to it. If we look at hypoxic hypoxia, this forms the most commonest causes of hypoxemia in our hospitalised patients. Low inspired oxygen is obviously a problem when at altitude, but for most regions of the world, this is not a problem. So if we now look at the other top causes or top three causes, we find BQ mismatching is by far the commonest, of which at its extreme, shunt and dead space form part of this. Hypoventilation, so the lack of movement of oxygen into and out of the alveola is an important cause and then an increased diffusional barrier across both the alveolar membrane into the pulmonary capillaries is another very common cause. VQ mismatching is probably the commonest cause of hypoxemia in our patients. In essence it means that ventilation and perfusion are not matched. In health, we know that the base of the lungs will be better perfused than the apexes because blood under gravity will pull to the lowest point. And even if one's lying flat, it will still pull to the posterior more than the anterior aspects of the chest. Likewise, because of the weight of the lung, the apex of the lung is much more open airways. So therefore, in theory, because of a lack of resistance to airflow, will be better ventilated. But because of the fact that blood pulls more to the bases, parts of the apex may actually not be as perfused as well as they are ventilated. Now this will cause minor VQ mismatching, but this in health is often compensated by a number of mechanisms. It is only in disease do VQ mismatchings become essential and important and is a major cause of hypoxemia. The problem is, and the fundamental principle that one has to understand, is that just because an area of lung may be better perfused than another, or an area of lung is better ventilated than another, these areas cannot all add up to make the blood optimally oxygenated by overcompensating. And part of the reason for that is, is because the oxygen only can combine with a certain amount of haemoglobin, and therefore having a prolific source of oxygen in one alveoli doesn't compensate for the fact that there is a reduction in another. In this diagram, West demonstrates this by two very well examined curves, and that's why I have included them. One plots partial pressure of CO2 against partial pressure of oxygen. And what he is suggesting here is that at low VQ ratios, so that is where there is more perfusion than that there is ventilation, you may find that you have a low VQ matching. And this is often caused the shunt. And what that means is that there is a blood supply, but that blood does not in any way go near a ventilated alveolus. At the other end of the extreme, we have the high VQ mismatching. And here, what we find is that it forms physiological dead space. So there is a high um, perfusion to an alveoli that's not well ventilated. At the extremes of this, you will see that the arrow when you are having a low VQ ratio points to the pulmonary vein. And when you have a very high VQ ratio, you're actually in the, the trachea. And at both of these extremes, you actually are at shunt for a low VQ matching and at dead space for a very high VQ matching. And this we will discuss again very shortly. In the second graphic, this is demonstrated with blood supply and an alveoli. And again, the same curve plotting 
concentrable partial pressure of CO2 over partial pressure of oxygen, showing how the effect of having a perfused alveoli, but not one that is ventilated, and then the other end of the scale, having one that is not perfused, but one that is ventilated, and how this can impact on your VQ ratios. The take home message is, is that there will be VQ mismatching throughout the lung in pathology. And it is this that causes hypoxemia. And unfortunately, it is this that cannot be compensated for, despite areas of the lung maybe having better VQ matching than others. Another consideration is the effect of pressure on the lungs. Here, we can see that because of alveolar pressure, as well as arterial and venous pressure, that this could affect the resistance of blood flow through the lungs. This is unusual because most times blood flow is related between the difference between arterial and venous pressure. But in the lungs, we have to also consider alveolar pressure. So you can imagine here in West Zones 1, the alveolar pressure is high, it's at atmospheric pressure. But because of the way in which blood doesn't like to go to the apex, the arterial pressure may actually be lower than alveolar and again, the venous pressure may be even lower than the arterial. And therefore, the only way blood will flow will it be if it can overcome atmospheric pressure. As you move down to West Zone 3, this is the normal relationship that we would expect, where arterial pressure is higher than venous that is higher than atmospheric. The reason that this becomes important, especially in critically ill patients, is when we mechanically ventilate them, because in effect, we are putting a high pressure into their chest, and sometimes this could affect the movement of blood across the capillary membrane. And therefore, this is something we have to be aware of when we're considering causes of hypoxemia in critically ill ventilated patients. I said I would come back and discuss the terms shunt and dead space. Shunt, or true shunt, is where the arterial blood bypasses the ventilated lung. It is only really relevant where you're considering bronchial and thespian blood supply which drains directly back into the pulmonary vein. These deoxygenated blood will lower the content of oxygenated, um, of oxygenated blood in, arteri in the arterial system and will cause a shunt. Dead space is a volume of gas that does not partake in gas exchange. You can split this into apparatus and equipment as well as physiological, which can be further subdivided into anatomical, which is all our conducting airways. But of relevance to us is the alveolar dead space. So this again is an area of the lung that is not well ventilated, but may be highly perfused. And it is this that can cause a VQ mismatching. Moving away from VQ mismatching, we can now look at other causes of hypoxemia. Hypoventilation becomes a very common cause of hypoxemia, commonly seen in hospital settings because of drugs which suppress respiratory drive, post anaesthetics, opiates, for example. But we also have to remember mechanical causes, for example, chest wall deformities, muscular abnormalities or neurological causes. Here, we find that the constant uptake of alveolar oxygen means that if we have a lower replacement of this alveolar oxygen, what will happen is that the oxygen will be taken up at a steady state, CO2 will replace it back into the alveoli, and therefore, proportionately, the amount of alveolar oxygen will reduce. The only way to prevent hypoxemia will be to supplement the flow of oxygen into that alveoli, so that even if the ventilatory rate or the clearance of that alveolar oxygen is lower, Basically, the amount of con or content of oxygen in that alveolar is increased. And this is why we often put supplemental oxygen on our patients when we give them respiratory depressants. Another cause is diffusional problems. Here, both in, in disease, also chronic lung disease like fibrosis, but also in acute pathologies like fluid or pneumonia, where fluid exudate has built up around the alveolar membrane, the distance which oxygen has to travel from the alveolar into the pulmonary capillaries is increased. And this could be a very useful reason for why patients are hypoxemic. Most likely though, it will be cause of VQ mismatching, but still it is a recognized cause of hypoxemia. Another common thing asked about in exams is the oxygen cascade. And here I have documented 
the partial pressure of oxygen in each part of the um, body from basically room air down to the mitochondria. What we, you will notice is this gradual gradient to quite low levels in the mitochondria. The importance of this is that it allows a constant flow of oxygen from an area of high pressure, the lungs, to an area of lower pressure, the mitochondria, and it is important that this is understood. To finish this talk, I think it is only correct that we discuss two very um, well used mathematical equations that are often discussed in critical care environments. When we discuss patients who are hypoxemic, often we grade them using something called an AA gradient. And here, it is an index of the amount, really, of VQ mismatching. To work it out, you need to know the inspired oxygen, so how much oxygen the patient is breathing, and you need your arterial blood gas to be able to find out your arterial carbon dioxide pressure. Then, what you then need to work out is the amount of actual oxygen in the alveola. And for this, you know that what you're inspired minus the saturated vapour pressure, which at body temperature is constant at 6.4 kilopascals, minus the arterial pressure of CO2 divided by the respiratory quotient, which we take at 0.8. By putting those figures into this equation, you can work out what the alveolar gas is. If you know the alveolar gas and you know the arterial oxygen pressure, you, know, you have just worked out the AA gradient. Obviously, the higher the gradient, the more hypoxemic the patient is. Finally, the other thing that we tend to use is something called a PA-FiO2 ratio. And here, all we are doing is saying, what is the ratio of the amount of oxygen in the blood compared to the amount of oxygen that I'm breathing? So, on a normal patient, a PaO2 of 15, breathing in 0.30% oxygen, will give a ratio of 50, and that is no problem. A patient who is on 30% oxygen again, 0.3, but who has a PaO2 of 10, may be described as being mildly hypoxic, or certainly having a hypoxemic issue. But if we look at a patient who has a PaO2 of 10, but an FiO2 of 0.5, we would suggest that with a PAFIO2 ratio of 20, they are heading for a lot of trouble. So it's important when you're examining blood gases to always know the amount of oxygen that you are being administered, because this puts into context how hypoxemic you are. I hope these slides have helped you understand the commonest cause of hypoxemia in our hospital and also has given you a framework of how to approach the patient when you see them on the wards. Good luck.